Batman killing the joke. Many shades of the Joker. Take one. There's always madness. You can just step outside and close the door on all those dreadful things that happened. You can walk them away forever. So he says. I was 16 years old when The Killing Joke came out, and it was an shocking. Toy. You know, you're used to reading things where people are like, we're going to take over the world. And then you read something like that where Gordon's watching these pictures of his daughter lying on the ground with a gunshot in her spine. Gunshot. It's basically a horror story. Horrific. It's, it's very, very small scale. Not it's big. not a big epic not battle. battle. There's nothing. There's not a lot to on it or larger than life. It's really kind of just ugly and down to earth. There's no way to know up front what's going to be the enduring piece of art you find out 30 years later you just see that it's still working it is a very simple batman and the joker, joker story but it tells you all the information you need it gives ahead you of time. all the pieces so if you've never read a batman comic you could read this and completely understand who everybody is and how they all fit together the backstory that alan moore tells about the joker it's straight out of a uh, kafka short story even after how many years it's been out, people are still debating what each panel meant or how the ending Presenter. was or what Joker did to Barbara. You know, yeah. there's a lot of things that are a little open-ended. It all kind of started. So it didn't do anything. Really. It definitely influenced Tim Burton. And for the Batman movie, clearly it influenced Christopher Nolan when he was making Dark the Dark Knight. For better or worse, that's kind of become the default setting for the Joker is this guy who's not just kind of scary and kind of wacky, but he's absolutely... Terrifying. Batman Joker, many shades of Joker. Barbara! Shot right to the spine. I wouldn't worry yet if I were you. It's just a psychological manifestation common among librarians. She thinks she's a coffee table edition. Joker, for the most part, was a well liked character because of the flamboyance of the character. You know, he's still violent, um, yeah. he's still deadly, mm -hmm. but it was more about the gags and the stunts yeah. than it was about the psychological terror he was This is psychological terror more so than, you know, worrying about um, a hand buzzer that might electrocute you. Sometimes, you know, in the comics, they played him as like this goofy guy who does clown based crimes mm -hmm. and stuff. And there's other times they tried sure. to make him more of a genuine threat to Batman and to others. But the killing joke was the first time that anybody really started taking him deadly serious. It's kind of a persistent phenomenon that there can be villains who do terrible things and yet somehow keep a hold over the popular imagination. But what's the appeal? Why would anybody want to identify with, even for a moment, people who are capable of horrible acts? Even though the acts are horrible, they convey a sense of freedom or liberation that is appealing even underneath all of the blood and gore. People like the Joker operate outside of typical social norms and restrictions. And for the rest of us who are not serial killers, even though we can judge and find the acts appalling, there could still be something appealing about the life of an outlaw, literally outside the law, that keeps the rest of us more constrained. Darkness, the vampire cage, the bats, and I'm going to show you the justice, justice of and lies the deepest part of the night. The of the night. And the Joker does the opposite. I'm going to take what's gleeful, what's whimsical, and what's childlike, and supposed to be innocent, and perverted. I'm going to show you the horror in the middle of that. Part it's happening into a primal fear. People um, are afraid of clowns. Sound of They're metal. laughing, but they're also hitting each other um, on the head, and they're falling breaking their bodies and they're a scary scenario Sweet for kids especially well I had some really interesting nightmares the nightmares just begun <laughs> point blank range Joker's 
this white face is meant to elicit the feeling of a cadaver, of a, a dead, dead body, body which corpse. gives you that feeling of like something that's come back from the dead, something that's unnatural. So and he looks a little bit ah, like a skeleton, it. you know, because his so chin is so long, his chin is so long, like someone who's had everything sort of like There's sucked out of his skull. Joker does his laughing gas serum. The smile is the death mask, so it's like the intimation of death that he always brings. All I can see is I'll be making a killing comic books in many ways are the modern version of fairy tales. All those fairy tales deal with the element of primordial evil. Primordial. Usually it's, you know, embodied in a character of like a witch or like it's in the woods or it's a troll. They took the representation of the evil that we all feel among ourselves and they give it body, they make it corporeal. And the Joker is that. Is that sense of the evil that everybody is capable of or the idea that lives inside of everybody and let's give it physical form. <laughs> The Joker is a horrifying maniac, but before he became the Joker, everything was going wrong for him. Everything and he was plans. clearly losing it to start with. And then when his wife dies in literally a, a freak accident, accident, it makes it okay for him to just, just go crazy. Go crazy. The comic falls into a vat of acid, gets washed out of the Gotham River, pulled off the hood. His face is now completely okay. white. His hair is green. He green. looks at himself and he starts doing this maniacal laughter. Maniacal laughter. That's the Joker is born. If you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. And the Joker's not a crying character. Forty tears. <laughs> it still leaves the question. Were those flashbacks you saw, were they real, or were they just part of the lies that he was saying? Sometimes I remember in one way, sometimes in another. If I'm going to have the past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. choice. One of the core tenets in all the Batman stories is that all of us have the light in the dark. A good person can become bad, and a bad person can become good, which is why you watch Batman always standing on the edge of the abyss, always struggling. And then you watch the guy who Sorry, was a very nice guy trying to help his wife, ends up being the greatest sociopath of all. Just the same there color. was this grimmer universe being established. The guys who were making Killing Joke and Batman Year One and all of those books at turned. that time, they grew up in the 70s, and they did see all the Scorsese movies and they saw the so you know, and horrible and violence playing out. Jeanette Kahn and Paul Levitz and Dick Giordano at the time, they were the, the three-headed leaders of DC, DC Comics. Comics. They were the striving to do important Man work. Back. They really wanted to show that comics could be something more than just kid stuff. By the 1980s, young people reading comic books in the 1960s were now adults, and they were starting to demand even more psychological realism from those superhero fiction. They hadn't given up on their comic books because they loved comic books. They were comic. making more demands. And Alan Moore mm -hmm. understood that audience. I mean, I remember being at Marvel Comics when that Superman annual came out mm -hmm. that Alan Moore wrote and Dave Gibbons drew. I was on a plane and I passed it around to all the other Marvel guys I was with saying, this is the most amazing Marvel Superman Church. comic I've read in ever. Marvel. It knocked everybody out. So Alan was clearly a talent. He's the one who said, oh, superhero fiction as a genre is as expansive as any other fiction. What happens if we start inserting psychological realism into superhero fiction? Instead of a guy dressed up as a bat fighting a guy dressed up as a clown, we have two people who are fighting a philosophical argument. And that might actually say something broader than just the fight of the page. That writing at multiple levels hadn't been seen in comic books before. Well, so there's something to study. <laughs> That's what a dose of reality will do to you. It's why I never touch the stuff. I find it waters down the hallucinations. Most traditional storytelling, you'll be able to follow a very storyboard approach, panel to panel, progression of the character's actions. What you're getting in an Alan Moore script is the progression of the character's emotions. Alan was notorious for writing art descriptions that were pages long. In a normal script, you might get a page of script for a page of art, you know, per book. I think you're almost looking at a page of script like per panel. For Alan Moore, for the level of detail and explanation and setup and, and layering that goes on an individual Big panel. Script. Because everything is so intricately thought through and thought out so that every panel has a payoff at a later date. Ha 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 ha
Tell What's me what I'm doing here. Somebody! Doing? You're doing what any sane man in your appalling circumstances would do. You're going mad. Visually, this movie was a real challenge. I mean, it's always a challenge when we're adapting something from a comic that's as famous as this one is. People have already kind of got a visual idea in their head about what it's going to look like as a movie. And Brian Bolland's art is so realistic, and it's so representational of real life. They look like real people in real settings without ever looking like a traced photograph. His stuff is absolutely realistic. It's barely stylized. I mean, his draftsmanship is impeccable. He doesn't just spoon feed you the, the imagery. He, he shows you things, and whether it's going to impact you psychologically, emotionally, he leaves it up to you. Brian Bolland is such a great and emotive artist that you see the pain on Jim Gordon's face. The horror on his face is made the really fear. clear by Brian Bolland's amazing portraiture. That's not violence that you can dismiss. It's just a comic book anyway. This is hard. And when you have a perfect match for Ryan Bowen with Alan Moore, uh, what you get is the subtleties of his storytelling. Is that when you read, it's this giant epic being told, and you see it in little snapshots, and then when you read the whole piece, it takes on a completely different meaning. And I think it's a testament to the strength of the artist as much as it is to the writer. Dark Knight Films. Keith Ledger as the Joker, he said, I'm an agent of chaos. But that idea really started here in 1988. It was Alan Moore who really articulated the Joker saying, I'm the Joker because one bad day, day proves, proves a, point. a point. Which is that all of the morality and the values, values and the that organize our lives have no meaning if life also contains tragedy and horror. So in the story, of course, the Joker tells a version of his history in which he became the Joker because on one day, everything he cared well, about was broken. So what the Joker doesn't know suspects is that Batman also had one bad day in his famous origin story where he lost his parents a to a an gunman in an alley. This didn't similar found him. Today's the day that it all falls apart. The car is around the corner if you want to consider it. You give everybody basically the same scenario and you watch them all react to it and choices they make after it and that's going to determine the course of their lives and that's what I think elevates or deepens the sure psychological is. weight of the story Jim. it's really All a story right. about Jim Gordon the Joker is the same at the beginning of the story and at the end Batman is the same at the beginning of the story and the end mm. they, don't, they don't change they don't really have a choice to make they fight their battle and they're going to keep fighting it no Jim matter what. is confronted with the worst day a father oh, could have ever imagined and he has a choice to make I want him brought in. Brilliant. And I want it done by the book. He didn't can break. break. He's not meant to kill the Joker. He wants to bring him to justice the law. Both of them go through these horrific uh, chain of events. And at the end, the Joker comes transformed and is forced to wear for it. And at the end of There's Commissioner Jordan's story, he stays true to his being and he rises above the horrors that, horror that he faces uh, to be true to himself. Batman is a specific hero that threatens the Joker sense of who Because Batman says, you didn't have to make that, that choice. You didn't have to reject everything to become a nihilist. Nihilist. Just because it's hard doesn't mean that we have to give up believing in justice. Believing in justice. And the Joker says, How no, so I do think we have to give up believing in justice. And that's what they're fighting about. I went crazy. And I'm smart enough to admit it. Great, <laughs> and you! Same sure. situation for Bruce Wayne or for this character of the comic. And they make different choices and become very, very different people. Which I think is what people can relate to. Why it has like a deep psychological bedrock, even though it's a comic book. First of all, I realize this is probably not how you thought the story would start. Not with a big, shiny moon. Barbara A city that could look stunning in spite of itself. Or me. Obviously, the Killing Joke itself is a shorter story than we usually adapt, so there was a little extra room, movie-wise, that we wanted to show people who that girl was and show what is taken away from her. It's one thing to end up hurt, hurt, but it's another thing to be such a peak athlete and to have that taken away from from you. I I believe it was John Ostrander who came up with the idea of Barbara Gordon becoming Oracle. That I think gave DC okay. one of its greatest characters ever. Maybe Cripple was just the now high tech good technology person, which was a modern concept, concept but who was also handicapped, handicapped and at the same time still able to 
do the heroic work. There he up chair. because of I always thought that that was a really great way to follow up on the killing joke. In terms of Goodbye, making Barbara. a point, the comic book field rallied behind Barbara Gordon. After the She's mentioned joke. in and Beers of Batman. And her story beyond this one. She becomes a hero just as triumphant as her father Jim Gordon is in this story, except her story extended beyond this graphic novel. Uh -huh. But it's the same story, Fruit. which is, yes, I was confronted by horror, by loss, by disability, disability, and I kept, kept fighting. fighting. I kept holding on to She finally a fight. Barbara Gordon. What you see now is you have a whole generation of writers and artists that have based their interest in comics on the bodies of work of Alan Moore Franklin. Right. You got Watchmen, you got Dark Knight Returns, you got Killing Joe. Those three, three books basically have transformed the, the comic industry. industry forever. And even today, you know, you still have that person too that still starts their description of comics with the words Biff, Pow, Wham, and those three books are the ones that completely destroyed that myth of what comics are. You need a different level of psychological depth because you don't have to expect it now. It's like once you've had the good stuff, you can't go back to the other stuff. You're like, oh, like now I know what that is, and you want that one, that all the time. And the the that influence is just been you know pervasive. Your preference for comics. People will still be talking about who is it's the a Joker joke. in the same way that people will still be it's talking about Batman and how much they love him and how he's the quintessential hero. They will they look at the Joker and be like, he is the quintessential Show villain them. of our age. All it takes is one bad, bad day. day. Maybe it's just you. <laughs> this reminds me of a joke. The many shades of Joker.